Good afternoon, McDistrict. This is Brian, and I'm coming at you with the next in our series of role-playing videos. Uh, this one is going to tackle recommendations, which is one of my favorite parts of the job. So uh, we're going to get a chance to walk through the approach, try to show it to you in real time what it should look like, and we'll get you a couple tips on the backside. All right, so uh, we just finished the demo, we wrote up our order, we got a great sale, now it's time to uh, get a chance to go hit those next great Mac customers. So, <clears throat> let's get into it. All right, Mrs. Jones, let me ask you, how did you like my demo? Awesome, well great, if you can go ahead and pull your cell phone out, there's one more really important part that I wanted to tell you about. Here's where you could really help me out. Now, I get paid every time I show Cutco, but I can only show it to people I've been personally recommended to. So while I'm cleaning up, what I wanted, needed you to do is shot down five to 10 people that you think might be nice enough to help me out. I'm not looking for people that you think would buy, just nice people like you who might be willing to take a look. Here's a pen and paper in my spiral right here. And if you can just jot down as many as you can, God, thank you so much. It's such a huge help. I'm going to start cleaning up so I can get out of your hair and I don't keep you guys here all day. Polishing cloth? Knives. Oh. Hey, uh, by the way, Mrs. Jones, uh, it's kind of a cool thing going right now. If you guys did actually put five people down for me, then you would be a sponsor. And if you got 10 people down, you'd be a double sponsor. And that would be huge. You'd, you'd be my hero if you did that. Um, the cool thing is once I get 50 sponsors, I automatically get some free Cutco from my manager. And that really helps me add to my collection. And it's going to help me accomplish my goals going forward because I have more to show and more to sell. So again, whatever you guys do is great. But man, if you could be a double sponsor, like I said, you'd be my best friend so again I'm just gonna you know clean polish 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 hey and uh, you know what a lot of my customers do mrs. Jones is they'll just grab their cell phone and kind of thumb through it and just see if anyone stands out to them um, you know is that something you think you could do just take a quick look for me oh that's the best you know and uh, yeah by the way uh, you know who do you know that loves to cook or, or hunt or fish um, you know dot 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 Awesome. All right, you know, I can also actually do online appointments, uh, which is kind of a cool thing. I can do that with people over the phone. So who do you know from out of town that might be willing to take a look? Because that's a really good help too. Oh, you guys are the best. Thank you so much. All right, so pause. They're writing people down. I'm going to stay busy, okay? It's really important. Uh, once you hand them your pen and paper and start smiling, uh, or once you hand them a pen and paper and start cleaning up, you want to smile, you want to break eye contact, and you want to go about your business. Now, for the sake of the video, I can only do so much here, but uh, as long as you're working, uh, or rather as long as they're working, you're working. Because the second you stop, they're going to stop, and you don't want them to stop. So, Organize your papers, throw away your rope shavings, polish your knives, polish them again, polish them a fifth time, polish your knives to where they're so shiny you can see into the future, okay? They're not keeping score though, so just stay busy. All right, so let's say they put uh, they put six people down for me. All right, here's where, uh, here's where we're gonna pick up. Oh my, oh my gosh, Ms. Jones, thank you so much. Oh, you guys are a sponsor, that's so fantastic. Um, hey, by the way, just so you know, you are only four away from being a double sponsor and that would be just this massive help. God, is there any way you could just take one more pass through, see if anyone else jumps out at you? Uh, even if it's people you don't think are gonna wanna buy something, that's totally fine. It would be such a huge help. Could you just take one more pass while I finish up? Thank you guys so much, I really appreciate it. Clean, 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 and they get up to 10. You guys are rock stars. Oh my God, you're my double sponsors. My double sponsors, you're like my benefactors. You don't even know how much this helps. So let me ask you real quick, Ms. Jones. On here, how do you know these people right here? Like the Johnsons, oh, you go to church with them, cool. And the Smiths, they're your neighbors, that's awesome. And uh, and then the, these right here, uh, they live down the street. Okay, very cool. And and by the way, what's the best time to reach them? Like, like just so I know, who on here is like a stay-at-home mom uh, You know, versus maybe who's working during the day? Check, check, check. Awesome. Well, it's obviously a lot easier for me uh, when people know who I am when I actually reach out to them. And so could you just text them a real quick heads up just so that way they know who I am, just kind of introduce me to them. That'd be awesome. In fact, honestly, um, let me share real quick. Is it okay? A lot of my customers just like to send this to make it easier. Um, the other thing I ask is if you can send it one-on-one -on -one to those folks, uh, I just find that's a little bit easier than kind of doing a group message. Um, it's just a little more personal that way. Yeah. And so what most customers say, I'll just read this off to you, Judy. Uh, it says, hey, I just want to let you know that uh, Brian, my Cutco guy, is going to be giving you a call. Uh, he's actually working his way through school by showing Cutco. Um, you don't have to buy anything. Just listen. And he gets credit. Thought you might be nice enough to help out. He's a super awesome guy. By the way, if you could put in there that I'm like staggeringly handsome, that would be a big help too. So maybe not. 
All right. Uh, by the way, Ms. Jones, another way I actually get recommendations is through Facebook. And for some of my customers, you know, this is a lot easier for them. It really helps me work on continuing to develop my networking skills in different ways. And it's really a great way to connect with friends who you may not have a good number for them currently. And so um, what a lot of customers allow me to do is just message a couple of their friends on Facebook and, um, you know, just see if they might be willing to take a look and help me hit my goal I'm working towards right now. You know, is that something you'd be okay if I did? Um, just shoot a message to a few of your friends? Yeah? That's awesome. Thank you so much. By the way, it's a way to say thank you for allowing me to do that. Here's what I'd love to do. Um, uh, go ahead and, and let me send your friend request real quick because, I mean, obviously, if I'm going to message them, we need to be friends and, you know, I'm your knife guy. Um, I'd love to get you guys a free veggie peeler uh, just as my gift to y'all to say thank you for being such a tremendous help. Is that okay? Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Jones. You guys are the best. Um, yay. I'm going to get out of here so that way you can go enjoy your day. Done. All right, a couple quick notes and recommendations. Y'all, the script is super simple. Uh, you need to be however much, however enthusiastic you are when you're reading it, you need to be more enthusiastic. And however confidently you're asking, you need to ask more confidently. Recommendations is the ultimate area where the customer feeds off us. There's this feedback loop that's happening. And when you memorize the script and when you deliver it with a lot of conviction, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of confidence, um, the customers don't even give it a second thought. They, they just do it. Um, the problem though is sometimes when people on the team are new, uh, they, they get a little nervous or they psych themselves out. And when you get nervous, your customers are feeding off that energy. It makes them feel nervous too. When I ask, it's just a really normal, fun, cool thing to do. Um, no different than them recommending uh, their friends to a really great restaurant, you know? Um, but when I was new, sometimes I kind of made it weird on accident. And, and when I made it weird, it got weird for them. And, and that's why sometimes people, when they're new, don't get as many recommendations. The other mistake that sometimes people make is they get a little bit complacent. Uh, you know, they the reality is they get a couple and they get excited. And so instead of kind of going back to the well and getting people up to being a double sponsor uh, or throwing out a peel or doing something to make it worthwhile for them, they just accept their four or six or two and, and they just kind of move on. You know, you're leaving a lot on the table if you do that. So uh, there are a couple concerns. The good news is when it comes to recommendations on uh, page 17 of your manual, there's one, two, three, four, five, uh, objections or questions that you'll get. Now I'll read these off just so that way you can you can listen to this and get the cadence of them down, um, but it's pretty simple. The good news is once you learn how to handle these four or five questions or objections you'll get, this is all you'll ever hear. Um, it's like in baseball, you know, honestly, um, you know, there's four or five pitches you'll ever see, you know, fastball, slider, curveball, breaking ball. There's really not that many. And once you learn what to look for on there, you kind of learn how to adjust your swing accordingly. Same thing is true with objections. Once you learn the common ones, um, it kind of bulletproof. It makes it super easy to go through. So let me read these off for you real quick, uh, and then we'll wrap up with, uh, with a couple final tips. So first off, if they say, I can only think of a few people. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for those people you did put down, Mrs. Jones. It really does help me immensely. I am trying to keep a real full schedule though, so I can hit my goals uh, that I'm working so hard towards. Man, is there any way you could just do one more pass through your phone? Just see if anyone else jumps out at you. It would be such a huge help. Do you think you could give it a shot? Awesome. Thank you so much. If they say, I don't know anyone, okay? Y'all, when they say, I don't know anyone, what they mean is, I don't know anyone that I think would buy a homemaker plus a right now for 12 12. You know, that's really what they're saying. So you just need to remind them that you're not necessarily looking for people that they think are going to buy. Um, because, you know, the reality is just like we teach y'all, don't prejudge your clients. You know, they don't know who their friends will or won't be into Cutco. So we don't want to put them to prejudge their friends. Um, hey, Ms. Jones, like I mentioned, I'm not looking for people that you think would buy. Honestly, just nice people. You know, nice people who'd be willing to spend a little time with me like you did today. So could you think of anyone who might just be willing to help me out? You know, and again, ask and then just wait for the answer. Um, if they say, I don't like to give people's names out, understand when they say that, y'all, um, you know, it almost implies like a trust issue, like they're not comfortable with, with something that's happening. And what that really means is that they're not clear what you're asking for. Because when you think about all the people in your life right now you're having trust issues with, I promise you, it's not the person you just did a cut code demo for. Um, that's someone who invited you into their home. That's someone who told you their schedule, like when they're there and when they're not. That's someone that, well, let you have a lot of large knives in their home. Uh, that's someone that discussed their financial information with you and possibly someone who gave you their credit card number more often than not. Does this really sound like someone we're having kind of trust issues with? 
Definitely not, definitely not. So when they say that, usually it means they're just having a misconception what you're asking for, okay? So it's very important on this one that you answer in a really confident and reassuring fashion. If they say, I don't like to give people's names out, you're gonna say, oh my gosh, I don't blame you, Mrs. Jones. I don't think I explained this properly. If it was anyone else that would call them besides me, I would be really hesitant too, but I promise it'll just be me. In fact, we respect your privacy and your customer's privacy so much, my managers don't even have access to this information. Information, so I promise it would just be me. So knowing that, who do you think you might be able to come up with to maybe be a sponsor for me? Okay, so don't be afraid to tell them that this is just you. Your managers don't even have it. Your customer, their fear, guys, is that they're gonna get their friend on some like mailing list or that they're gonna get called by a bunch of other random companies. They don't know that you're talking about just a one-on-one -on -one relationship between you, the customer, and possibly some nice people they would send you on to see. In my experience, once customers are, are clear on that, sky's the limit and you can average a really large number. Uh, if they say, leave the sheet with me and I'll fill it out. People mean well when they do that, y'all, but it's like a promise order. Uh, even though they intend to do it, the odds of that ever happening are actually extremely low. And even if it does, it's gonna create a ton more legwork for you. So here's what you say. Man, that would be great, Mrs. Jones, but honestly, that would mean I have to make trips back and forth to all my customers to get them, or I'd have to call to bug you. And, and I know the second I leave, honestly, I'm definitely not your biggest priority, and, and I don't blame you for that. Um, since I am gonna be cleaning up for a few minutes anyway, I'm definitely not trying to, to delay you. Do you think you might could just put a handful down, and, and then if you think of some more later, you could always call or email them to me. Would that be okay? Just you know, give it a minute, and whatever you get, you get. Awesome, you guys are the best, thank you so much. If they say, let me call them first or I'll get back to you, okay? Hey, of course, Mrs. Jones, I wouldn't wanna see them if they're not interested. I don't wanna waste their time, I definitely don't wanna waste mine either. But to make it easier, if you could jot down their names and numbers, I just will not contact them till we get a chance to connect. So I'll call you tomorrow, you can let me know who gives a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and again, I promise it would just be limited to me. So who do you think you might be able to put down? Okay, the important thing is you always ask again. Uh, sometimes people answer the objection, but then they don't immediately ask a question and it creates this weird gap and this weird pause and your customer doesn't know what to say, so they just tend to ask another question. All right, so here's my last tips in getting a lot of recommendations. Number one, you've got to memorize the script. You need to memorize the script like it's your favorite song coming on the radio. Once you get it down, it's amazing how, how much the script sounds like you wrote it. Okay, um, getting good at recommendations, guys, is a life skill. This is gonna help you one day network to go get that dream job, to go fundraise effectively, to rally people to a cause that matters to you. Um, this is gonna help you in a 100 areas of your life. Learning how to put yourself out there in a professional and positive way is one of the most useful business skills you can develop from your time with Cutco and Vector, but you gotta do the hard work right now to get it done. So make sure you memorize the script. It's not that hard. You need to memorize it like when your favorite song comes on the radio. I love you too. When YouTube comes on, I'm not thinking about what comes next. I'm just singing along. Okay. Number two, second tips, you got to stay busy. I mentioned that before, but as long as they're working, you keep working. You let them set the tone and, uh, and, and you know what? You just pace yourself. Clean, clean, clean. Number three, you want to throw out some great thought joggers to the customer. You know, and, and the best way to do that is by using third party examples. What I mean is by saying, hey, Mrs. Jones, a lot of our customers grab their neighborhood directory. You know, that, that seems to be really helpful to think of some folks. Hey, Mrs. Jones, a lot of our customers like to do X. A lot of my clients will put down people from church. A lot of my customers will do this. So again, it's not just you saying it, it's, it's really the backing of, uh, they call it social proof. That's a good way to do it. Okay, and then the last thing, always ask again. I don't care how many you got. Um, I had a customer put down 25 for me one time, and I said, hey, Mrs. Jones, this is such a huge help, I can't even tell you. Honestly, uh, you know, this may sound crazy, but you're super close to beating my personal record for the most I've ever gotten. Just for fun, do you think you could take a look, just like one more pass through the address book, and just see anyone else who jumps out at you, because you're so close to my record. And they're like, what's your record? I go, I'm not gonna tell you, Mrs. Jones, but you're really close, could you give it a shot? Guys, her name was Nancy Allen. She went from 25 to 42, okay? Just because I said that goofy thing, but it worked. I'll give you one last bonus tip because you guys are awesome for sitting through to the end. Um, if you want to target your recommendations in the area that you want, here's how you do it. It's literally this simple. I ran an office in the mid cities for years. And so after I'd get recommendations, I would look through the list with them and whatever area I wanted to be in, okay? Maybe it was a customer in Bedford or Hearst. I wanted to do demos in South Lake or Colleyville or areas like that. Um, all you have to do is come up with an excuse for why you want to be in that area. Hey, Mrs. Jones, out of these 10 people you put down, just so I know, who on here lives in Southlake or Colleyville? 
You just assume that there's someone on there who does. And then your customer always goes, oh, I I'm sorry, Brian, do they, do they have to live in South Lake? And I go, oh gosh, no, by no means. It's just that my wife works in South Lake, so I have to go out there pretty frequently to drop my kid off at daycare. And you know, with gas and everything the way it is, it's so helpful for me to be able to grab a demo in that area, just kind of offset it a bit. So who do you know that's in South Lake that maybe I could just add here real quick? Temple. Hey, Ms. Jones, who on this list actually lives in Highland Park? Oh, um, none of them. Do they have to live in Highland Park? Oh, God, of course not, Mrs. Jones. But my office that I work out of is in Highland Park. And so since I have to go out there anyway, it's such a huge help to grab some demos at Preston Hollow or Highland Park or even over in Richardson. So who do you know there that maybe I could jot down? Awesome. Bonus tip, but I do it all the time. That's how I get in the neighborhoods I want. Guys, I hope you're having an awesome day. I hope you find this video helpful. And uh, make sure you review this a few times. But get that approach down, grab a PC, and we'll talk to you next time.